but the first element is 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 you know what it takes to be a brand and building that out secondly is the channel management and then thirdly the third element is the way that the the retail property model is changing so malls are also malls and high streets are also changing um, and they're moving away from uh, heavy fixed cost investment long leases uh, long fit out periods um, and then expecting that store to trade permanently for 10 years or whatever um, away from that towards what I call the plug and play system and um, ma mainly because the malls and, and high streets can't attract uh, there aren't enough anchor tenants anymore because a lot of the anchor tenants have gone bust um, and, 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 and the property owners desperately need to attract a new pool of of, of brand talent into their into their locations and where are they going to get those from they're not going to get them from the traditional incumbent retailers they're going to have to get them either from international brands or from online players and um, certainly the online players are not going to want to make the kind of uh, long-term retailing commitment that used to be uh, used to be accepted so they're going to want much shorter leases much more flexible leases a lot of the online players don't even understand retailing they've got no idea how to do a staff rotor they've got no idea of how to do clock in clock out that's not their world their world is is the world of data and of, of you know social media marketing etc so if the malls want to attract this new generation of brands into into their spaces they're going to have to um, come up with this new plug and play model and the way that I see the plug and play model working is that you know people are going to want to come in and run stores physical as a kind of campaign so they're going to want you know an online player will say look I'm when when we're in the New York market digitally but we but you know it's costing us this much to recruit new customers in the New York area through Facebook or through Google uh, if we can recruit them more cheaply through being able to show them our product directly and have them experience an immersive brand action in the store, um, th then we should do that and we'll do it for, but we want to do it for nine months or something. We don't want to do it forever necessarily because if we're going to target the New York market, we actually might want to have something in Grand Central Station for a bit and then we might want to go into Hudson's Fields. Uh, and, th and, th and then we might want to go uh, to uh, the American Dream for a bit because it's different customer bases and we want to access all those customer bases. And once we've harvested them, we can always sell to them, repeat, online. We don't always have to be there physically. Once we've got them, you know, we're pretty damn good at hanging on to them um, digitally. So I see the plug and play model working like this. I think that the, the store setup changes from being a physical setup to being a digital setup in other words all the elements of the store become digital right all the branding becomes digital so it all passes from like physical bits of furniture and the things that we put in stores to to communicate the brand into digital screens so i think the store windows become digital screens i think the store walls largely become digital screens um, which where you can put in a new marketing chip and flip the brand like that overnight and I think that, that also they're going to want to have stores that give them all the metrics that websites give them. Uh, so they're going to want to have all the camera technology, um, all, you know, the hotspots and the, and the real-time data on footfall and conversion and, 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 and dwell times and all those sort of things. They're going to want an engagement. They're going to want that in real time. So it needs to be kitted out with all that technology. And it doesn't make sense for the brand to own that technology and have to rip it out after nine months and move it somewhere else. It makes much more sense for the mall owner to own that technology and be able to flip the brands through the space, to rotate the brands through the space. So I, I see malls evolving towards actually becoming brands themselves, collecting customer data, um, equipping their spaces with technology, uh, and also with people. I, I actually think that they will have brand ambassadors whose job is not to manage stock and stuff but to sell the product but I think the brand ambassadors will, will belong to the malls so when you rent a space in a mall for say nine months or whatever the brand ambassadors come with that which enables also the, the, the mall to manage staff over lots of different outlets because we all know that when you walk into a mall that you've got one, one stall is, is crowded out and the staff can't cope and 90% of the other stores, all the staff are standing there and, and, and there's, no one, there's no consumers in there. Right? That's got to be inefficient. It makes much more sense to manage the mall staff as a whole and send them to where the action is 
Um, so I think that the malls will own the staff and they will own the technology and the brands will rotate through. Uh, the advantage of all of that will be, number one, it'll be great for the brands because it will enable them to have a very flexible setup and to really work multi-channel to its maximum to be able to harvest customers in a market, to know in real time whether marketing campaigns are working or not or experiences uh, are working or not, to be able to have their community gather in the stores and have events in the stores um, and, 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 and yet have the very strong online as well. And yet from the mall's point of view, you know, they're going to have an exciting mix of new brands all the time passing through. So if you look from consumer's point of view, what you're going to have is great experiential brands with really strong communities popping up in your mall um, and, and, and it will rotate, it will change. So the mall becomes a really exciting place or the high street, main street becomes a really exciting place, which we all know it wasn't 30 years ago. If you look, in 1991, the high streets and malls were not exciting places. It was the same old boring brands in every location in the country. You know, it was all the same old tired brands. Not, again, just all doing the transactional model. Now, you're going to have hundreds of new brands popping up, doing great experiential models, um, and, and it'll become and the mall itself will be a great experience so you know i think that the shopping then becomes a really fun exciting activity um with a kaleidoscope of brands that you're not necessarily expecting and, and then you know you'll, you'll 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 enter the brand universe you'll go into their digital system and then you'll probably repeat digitally um if you like the brand you're just going to go on uh, working, you know, buying from them digitally, um, and then you know next month there'll be some new brands, etc. And it'll always be exciting for the consumer. So I actually see a very rich future for the whole consumer space, much more exciting, much more innovative, uh, combining the the you know the kind of really slick uh, delivery and shopping transaction of the web with re all the best things that stores can offer in terms of branding, and they're all backed up by brands that see, that understand that they have to do so much more for their consumers to be more personalised, to, to, to have higher values, to, to help their consumers with their lives rather than just sell them a product. Um, so I, I see really a very rich future for, for the whole consumer space.